Hello, I'm Lini. Today I'm visiting uh, Vietnamese Museum at the Ho Chi Minh City. So please waiting to watch the YouTube Patri. Hi, thanks for tuning in to Backpackers or Bust. My name is Patrick, and uh, I'm here in Ho Chi Minh City at the War Remnants Museum. Uh, you can see here, this is kind of the interrogation prison section where they show how a typical prison area would be. Here are the tiger cages, which were barbed wire cages that prisoners that we deemed valuable to interrogate would be kept to break. Here's more of a traditional interrogation technique. And then the guillotine, which is a French contraption that was used throughout Vietnam. I here outside the War Remnants Museum where they have some tanks, a Chinook helicopter. Uh, a demining bulldozer, we've got an armored troop transport, we've got some howitzer, some immobile howitzer, and then a mobile howitzer. Here inside the War Remnants Museum, these are propaganda posters from around the world during the time of the Vietnam War. Different countries asking for the U.S. to exit the war, and exit Southeast Asia, to leave Vietnam, leave Cambodia, and go home. Even Cuba. <laughs> and then over here, the European nations and here's the B-52. I was in the U.S. Air Force, and this was my plane. Fifty years before I joined. Here inside the War Remnants Museum, uh, this is a collage. Requesting peace in Vietnam during the time. The 
as far as Europe is concerned. This is some um, propaganda, I guess, from European nations requesting us to exit the war and bring our troops home. Here you can see uh, a quote from Ho Chi Minh. He was the leader of the North Vietnamese, uh, quite a decisive character during the war. And all of the current Vietnamese money has his face on it. This section here is uh, called Rakim. And it's a uh, collection of photos that represent the journalists lost, whether they're military journalists or civilian journalists. To commemorate them and the photos that they had taken. Let's take a look at what else. We wade deeper into jungle war. There's a photo of a bunch of Huey helicopters. This would have been a cavalry division. This part of the museum is going to show a lot of people trying to recover from Agent Orange and the different defoilage and dioxin and chemicals that we used during the Vietnam War. Here's a story of somebody who was born in 1982. Same year I was born. Here's people working on recovering or working with their disabilities that they got, whether it be from directly from the war or passed on after the war. Well, this is the uh, war crime section of the War Remnants Museum. 
here you can see different types of shells and everything used from M79 grenades to the different cartridges of the different rounds that we fired. Forty millimeter cartridges are generally used for small tank rounds and through airplanes. The mortar shells, obviously through the mortars. And a recoilless rifle shell. Now here is an image of one of the bridges that our laser-guided bombs from the airplane to take out. This is the Hamrong Bridge, which was taken out in 1967. And if you want to see kind of a breakdown of our bomb dropping, the United States bomb dropping throughout Vietnam during the war, the black spots show the heavier bombardment. You can see once you get down to central Vietnam, it became very heavily bombarded. And then as land was lost, And Kampucha is modern day Cambodia, where Thailand is Thailand today. And you can see that Thailand has taken over a significant amount of Cambodia if you look at their historical maps. Um, here you're going to see a rough estimate of losses incurred by the North Vietnamese. And just a little bit of the destruction that was caused. Okay. So now we're into the uh, truths part of the War Museum. Here is a statement from Mr. McNamara, who, uh, if you're from the Detroit area, at the airport they have a huge terminal named after him. And here's some details about the three wars that the United States participated in. And even during World War II, the Korean War, you can just look at the amount of tons of ordnance that we dropped. The Vietnam, the Vietnam War makes the others look like battles. Now this photo here was made famous because that was the photo of the helicopters leaving the U.S. Embassy in Saigon as Saigon began to fall. There's the B-52. When I was in the Air Force, that was the plane I was on. But many years after this war, B-52 was capable of carrying nuclear weapons along with thousands of tons of, hundreds of tons, sorry, of uh, traditional ordnance. During the Vietnam War, 
we began utilizing our aircraft carriers. You can see some of the modern designs that even our current aircraft carriers follow. Here's a pie graph showing the uh, different sorties that the U.S. Air Force had against targets in North Vietnam. I do like how they call the South Vietnamese puppet military forces when they were a legitimate military and they had legitimate leadership and legit legitimate political say. But for this museum, they considered them puppet because the North won the war and the winners write the history books. Crappy video. 